my name is Selena Wu, and this is my presentation on DC and RC circuits. Experiment introduction. In this experiment, we'll build two different circuits to observe the behavior of circuits containing resistors and capacitors in series and in parallel, measure the actual values of conventional current and potential differences in circuits, and find RC, time constant of a circuit. This whole principle is used. The noble explains conservation of current through a circuit. The amount of current that goes in one wire should be the same amount of current that returns out of the end. If a wire is split into two wires, the amount of current in those two wires should sum up to the current in the original one wire. The loophole explains energy conservation throughout a circuit. It explains why round trip changes in voltage are zero, because no voltage should be dropped in a connected circuit. It gives the equation that the sum of potential difference in the capacitor and potential difference in the resistor is zero in our RC circuit. Additionally, our simulation uses the lumped element circuit model. The electric potential difference in wires, ammeters, and voltmeters should be quite small, so we assume that they are negligible since we only care about the significant electric potential differences in batteries, resistors, and light bulbs. Ohm's law provides the equation for calculating electric potential difference. And finally, the time dependence of voltage in our RC circuit gives us the following equation. This equation offers the basis for solving for RC, time constant, which will be explained in this lab. DC circuit observations. When we construct the circuit shown above, we find that the current running through the wire is constant as stated by the loop rule. It is the same for ammeter 1 and ammeter 2. It is the value of 3 volts over 147 ohms, which is approximately 0.02 amps. When one ammeter is reversed, it reads the opposite sign value of negative 0.02 amps. When one ammeter is replaced by a voltmeter, the remaining ammeter reads 0 amps, and the voltmeter now reads 3 volts. The voltmeter is not a conductor and does not allow for charge to flow through it. It acts as a sink for a current and does not allow electrons to flow through. The ammeter then reads 0 amps because no current is flowing, and the voltmeter can record the EMF of the circuit. Potential differences. The sum of individual potential differences for a round trip around the circuit should be 0. The measured differences actually does add up to 0. The values shown on the slide display the electric potential differences along different paths of the circuit, and the electric potential is graphed. When the voltmeter is attached, the ammeter reading does not change because the circuit is still closed. The voltmeter is being added onto a fully connected circuit. In the previous scenario, the voltmeter replaced a wire or other conductive material that prevented the current from passing through the circuit. This time, the voltmeter provides no interference to the circuit, therefore leaving the ammeter reading unaffected. The ammeter reads 0.02 amps when the voltmeter is connected across the 100 ohm resistor. When an ammeter is placed in parallel with the 100 ohm resistor, the current increases to 0.06 amps because it is split between the two parallel paths. The current wants to travel through the path of the ammeter since it has no resistance in this simulation, making the 47 ohm resistor the only resistor that is applied on the current. We relay Ohm's law expression to solve for R, resistance, and use the value I for current as the unrounded calculated value from the original circuit setup. We find that the resistance in the 47 ohm resistor is 46.991 ohms, the resistance in the 100 ohm resistor is 100.009 ohms, and the resistance in the wire and ammeter are both 0 ohms. RC circuit observations. When a 9 voltage battery is connected to a 10 ohm light bulb and 200 microfarad capacitor in series, the light glows brightly before dimming. When this first happened, the capacitor was charging and the current in the circuit was increasing until the capacitor was fully charged and the current then decreased to zero. When the battery is disconnected and the capacitor is directly connected to the light bulb, the light again glows brightly before dimming. When the battery was removed, the capacitor began discharging, and the current in the circuit increased until the capacitor was fully discharged and the current decreased to zero during this process. We measured the amount of time needed to fully charge and fully discharge the capacitor with a 10 and ohm and 20 ohm light bulb. The capacitor is finished charging and discharging when no current is flowing or when a connected ammeter reads zero amps. RC data. Here we recorded the voltage over time of a circuit consisting of a 9 voltage battery, a 200 microfarad capacitor, and a 30 ohm light bulb when the capacitor is discharging. Then we found the value of the natural log of voltage over the initial voltage of 9 volts and graphed that against time to find the equation of the line of best fit. Finding RC, time constant. Due to the time dependence of voltage, we can take the equation for the line of best fit from the graph of the natural log of voltage over initial voltage versus time. The slope of that equation would be equal to the negative inverse of RC, our time constant. 
Therefore, we can solve for RC and find that RC equals 6.002 seconds. This value is extremely close to and agrees with the value of the circuit construction kit where RC equals 6 seconds. Reflection. If the lab was conducted in real life, the actual ammeter would have a small amount of resistance that would decrease the ammeter reading in the first circuit. The actual measured current value in real life would be smaller than that of the simulation. A modeled circuit of just a battery and capacitor would charge very quickly, almost immediately after the circuit is connected. However, the use of a real battery and real capacitor would prove this prediction to be false, since real-life capacitors require time to fully charge. Finally, we reached our conclusion that the RC time constant of our circuit is 6.002 seconds.